to steal on the floor and he has everything under control. Come on, somebody. Give him a shout of praise today. Woo! Glory to God. Amen, amen, and amen. Woo! I dare somebody in the class say, Jesus is still Lord. Oh, I wish you believed it. Come on, declare it. And say, he's still Lord. Come on, he's Lord over everything. He's Lord over every problem. He's Lord over every difficulty. He's Lord over every issue. He's Lord over every virus. He's Lord over cancer. He's Lord over Corona. He's Lord over stars. He's Lord over every disease. No sickness, no disease shall come. Not by the well and why? Because we dwell in the secret place of the Most High God. I wish somebody give him praise. I wish somebody that man give him glory. Because he is, he is, he is, he is, he is, he is. Somebody in the class say, you are Lord, you are Lord, you are Lord, you are Lord. Yes, she is. Come on, I dare somebody for a few moments. Let's just make the devil mad. Come on, let's give God a great big praise for the next 30 seconds. Come on, and give him praise like you know that he's Lord over everything. Like you know he's the King of Kings. And you know he's the Lord of Lords. Like you know he's your protector. Come on. Yes, she is. Yes, she is. Come on, give him glory. Come on, give him a shout of praise. It'll be all right. It'll be all right. It'll be all right. It'll be all right. My version. It'll be all right. It'll be all right. It will be all right. It'll be all right. It's gonna 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 be all right. It will be all right. It'll be all right. It's gonna be all right. It'll be all right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. In my soul. It's all right. All right. All right. All right. Come on. All
Well, come on, give God a shout of praise, everybody. Come on. Just look at everybody on your own. Tell them, say, it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. Come on. Look at them. Tell them, say, it's going to be all right. I declare it. In the name of Jesus, it's going to be. Listen. The word declares that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of living of a sound mind. And we who have the God kind of faith, we call those things that be not as though they were. And we choose to declare the word of the living God over our lives. Just find somebody and tell them, say, it's going to be all right. Amen, amen, and amen. Listen, if you weren't here on yesterday, I was sharing with them that over the last 16 years or so, there has been uh 68 i'm sorry y'all sit down sit down forgive me i'll make y'all stand the whole service <laughs> if i gotta stand everybody should be standing praise god that's why i, I gotta do like a uh, cool cool lt stop wearing gym shoes when i preach because i stand a, I, I stand a long time <laughs> i gotta put on put on insoles and stuff keep my feet comfortable Glory to God. But hear me, church. Let me say this. Don't you let the devil get you in fear. I'm going to say that again. Don't you allow the devil to get you in fear. I was going home on yesterday, and uh, I generally don't listen to the news, but there was so much stuff coming across the news, and people are having a fit. Everything is closing down. But you know what? Then I drove by a liquor store. And then I drove and then I drove by a tavern. It was jam. I mean, there was no room in the inn. Y'all ain't talking back to me. I said, Lord, now, if the tavern can be crowded, if the liquor store can still do business, come on, if they still having house parties backing it up, if the club didn't shut down, then why should the people of God? Because they that know their God, we do put our trust in the living God. <laughs> I saw, I saw, I saw the other day, they said, they said, <laughs> Ms. Anderson, they, they, they had preachers posting on, on Facebook, talking about they stood in line two hours, two hours to buy groceries. Now, uh, this is what got me, this is what got me. If they say we can't have gatherings, editorial, if we can't have gatherings or shouldn't have gatherings over 200, you got 4,000 folk in the store. Y'all ain't talking back to me. You got 4,000 people in the grocery store. They ain't closing down Costco's and Sam's Club. Y'all ain't talking back to me. Come on. They ain't closing down those stores. Come on. McDonald's still open. White Castle still open. Y'all ain't talking. Come on. Wendy's, Wendy's still making them burgers. Praise the Lord. Come on. Come on. Harold's Chicken still frying over there. Y'all ain't talking. Come on. KFC and Church's Chicken are still open. Come on, somebody. You mean to tell me we who have the Holy Ghost? Listen, let me help y'all out. We are people of power. Come on, say, I'm a person of power. Listen, you, listen, don't you go around let the devil get you messed up and jack them on what could happen, baby. Listen, first of all, if I do die, I'm going to go be with Jesus. That's the reason we live this life. But if I leave here, I'm going with him. And before my body hit the ground there, I will already be with him. By the time y'all see me in a box, I will be already seven days.
engage with him. And if you pray me back, I will say, lead me because I'm in the presence of all God and the presence of Almighty God. It's in him that I live. It's in him that I move. It's in him that I have my being. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'll sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. I'm going to get that out of my system. <laughs> Come on. Somebody put out a blast. Come on. We gonna, they're going to shut down, shut down America. You can't shut down the United States and do what? Consider this. If they shut down the whole United States, hospitals don't stay open. Which means the giants has got to come to work. Come on. Listen, we have to, <laughs> El Torres said, I'm working too. Listen, y'all, you put your trust in God. You put your trust in God. Come on, just look at the person and say, put your, your, your trust in God. You got to put your trust in God. Now, I'm not saying you don't, you don't take precautions. And I sent out a blast on yesterday. We have taken every precaution. This church been cleaned so many times, dear God. It's been scrubbed from the from the rooter to the tutor, all up, upstairs, downstairs. Everything that can be scrubbed has been scrubbed. It's been scrubbed, sprayed, pleaded the blood over, spit on, slapped on, prayed on, sanctified. Come on. You're in a holy church today for real. <laughs> Woo! If you ain't saved in here, you save in here. Amen. And so listen, let me let me encourage you. Don't let the devil get your mind all jacked up. With this, listen, hear me. This is what the devil wants to do. If the devil can get the children of God to operate in fear, hear me now. Let me calm down some. This is why I, 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 I try to keep from being a church that's always hyped. Because sometimes we get caught in the hype and we miss the word. That's what today, that's, that's what today I ain't going to preach today. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to you today. Because if we don't understand the God that we serve, and who God is to us. Come on, somebody. You do what is necessary and leave the details to God. But here's what I want you to notice. One of the things you will notice if you read your Bible at all is that God, his work, God's greatest works are magnified in a crisis situation. I'm going to say that again. His greatest works are magnified in a crisis situation. And many of us don't even know what God can do until God brings us out of something. See, what's the, see, you can't say God is a deliverer until you've been delivered from something. Come on. You can know that God can keep you until you're in a position where God now has to be your supplier. Come on, somebody. And so let me encourage you. Listen, you better keep your trust in the Lord. This is why, this is why, listen, for some for some church folk, it's good for you because now you can't play church now. Woo! Tell them, say, you can't, you can't play, you need God show enough now. I asked him on Wednesday, uh, on yesterday, I said, how long can you hold your breath? Come on. Come on. You can't hold your breath that long, can you? If you do, we're probably going to bury you, praise the Lord. And so you got to trust God. I don't care where you go. Listen, the Bible says uh, uh, over in Hebrews, I believe Hebrews, the 12th chapter, somewhere around there. The Bible says that in that day that everything that, that can be shaken will be shaken. But that that can't that is not shaken will remain. Which means then that your faith cannot be shaken. And in this season, hear me. And it will be in this season that our faith will be tested. The Bible declares that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Now, it does not mean that you won't be under attack. It means that the enemy, when he does attack, and he's already started his attack, that he can't, watch this now, that he cannot do what he wants to do. Somebody said he can't do what he want to do. And so then since he can't do to me what he wants to do, then my hope and my confidence has to be in the Lord. Listen, not in our government. 
Come on, they, listen, not, watch this, I'm going to go one deeper, not even in your hand sanitizer. They can't make it that fast. Amen. They can't make it that fast. You, you can't go around and not, and not touch nothing and nobody forever. Because at some point, you got to touch you. Come on. Listen, and, and, and as your pastor, I, I still like to hug y'all. Amen. And so now I, I'm gonna tell you up front. If, if you if you may hug you, just say, Pastor, no, today ain't the day. <laughs> and I'm cool with that. And I won't hug you. Come on, girl, get on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Bless your heart. Bless your heart. Hey, Amen. Listen, I'm gonna tell you something. When you understand the power of the God you are, let me serve. See, this, this power is not just for just for the preacher come on it's not just for the missionary or the mothers it's for those who are blood bought born again children of God and listen if you read, read, read over in, in the book of Exodus there were several plagues that came about over in that land in Egypt understand God sent the plagues in that land because God was trying to give Pharaoh a way out without killing his folk but because of the hardness of Pharaoh's heart, God said, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to kill every firstborn of everything. The first calf going to die. The first tree going to die. The first baby going to die. And you say, well, 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 bad God. No, God had a plan. Watch this now. But here's what God said for his children. He said, what I want you to do is you apply the blood. I'm going over here. He said, if you apply the blood, that when the plague comes, oh, because see what now? Because the plague is coming. Don't miss that. The plague is going to still come. But when the, see, oh God. <laughs> the plague, watch this. One, the plague has been given a command by God. But the plague also has eyes. Say, so, Pastor, you mean how does the plague have eyes? Watch this. The Bible says, God says, when I see. When I see the blood, I will pass. God says, okay, that one there is mine. That one mine. That one mine. That name covered. That name covered. That one there, oh, that's mine there. And so whenever, and so whatever's coming, when it sees the blood on you, it can't take you because it sees the blood. Now the devil wants to use that to attack you. Because see, see, watch this. See, some of y'all gonna go outside with no coat on, no hat on, and you're gonna be sniffing, talking about, oh Lord, I think I got it. No, that's called being foolish going outside half dressed. That will happen with or without a plague. Come on. But when you've done all you can do, you. Oh, I wish somebody say I'm still standing. Come on, say I'm still standing. I'm still. Come on. And God sent the plague and all the firstborn died. What's this? It was not until after the firstborn died that then Pharaoh said, you know what, Moses, get you and them children, y'all get up out of here. Come on. And then he let them go. Woo! <laughs> Could it be? Watch this, y'all, boy, tell you. Could it be that God is letting the, it do what it do? So when the work, because see, it's going to look real funny when you go to work. And your 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 co-workers who are not saved. And they say, I'm feeling some kind of way. And you take your hand and say, in the name of Jesus, by the God whom I serve, I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to be healed. Come on. All of a sudden they start feeling better. 
they go in the back by the freezer and find somebody else. Girl, guess what? I feel better now. What happened? I went to such a so and so and she prayed for me. I felt better. They come in too, girl. Lay hands on me. Oh, and after a while, everywhere you work, folk don't start getting saved. Everywhere you go, the glory of God is going to be an influence. Everywhere you go, the presence of the Lord will be there. And folk who may get sick will be healed and God will be. Is there anybody in the house who wants to bring God some glory? Or would you look at somebody and say, let's bring God glory to bring him glory? Y'all better stop. I feel something here. And so, and so hear me, watch this. Hear me. This, this for the church, you all, this for the body of Christ, this is our finest hour. <laughs> Woo, I'm trying to help somebody. This it Lynn, this is the finest hour for the church. Come on, see, some of y'all going to get real bold. You're going to find a hospital and say, show me where the emergency board is. Why? Because I'm full of the Holy Ghost. And I want to lay hands on somebody. And you think what's on them will get on me. No, what's on me going to get on. Y'all missed that. What's on me will spill over on somebody else. And when what's in me get over on them, it's going to rearrange and change them. Is there anybody in the house who wants to change your atmosphere? Who wants to bring glory to God with your life? See, this is why I encourage you to read the Bible. Joel, Joel prophesied over, over 5,000 years ago. Joel said that in the last day, I'm going to shout by myself. I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. And your young men, come on, God want to use this generation to bring glory to the Father. Is there anybody in the house who said, God, if you want to use somebody, I'm your man. If you want to use somebody, I'm your woman. But whatever you're going to do in the scene and God, do it with me. Summon to God, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Come on, God, do it, do it, do it. Whatever it takes to bring your glory, do it, do it, do it. Whatever it takes to bring your honor, do it, do it, do it, do it. Whatever it takes to give your praise, God, do it, do it, do it. Somebody shout and say, God, do it. And so... That is my take on the coronavirus. That is, that is my take. Charles, Charles, pull up uh, Joshua one nineteen. Joshua one nine. I'm gonna say all something. What's this? What's this? Pull up, pull up Joshua chapter one verse nine. What's this? What's this? God said, "Have I not commanded thee? Be strong." Ooh, would you look down the road and say, be strong, be strong, be strong. Now, question, watch this. Why would God tell us to be strong? I'm glad you asked. God says to be strong because in this season, you will feel the urge to be weak. He said, be strong and of a good courage. Because some of us, y'all, are freaking out. Some of y'all, this is why some of y'all, you can't stand it. Don't cut the news on. Come on, the news is, is tearing down your faith. Now, I'm not saying don't watch it. Watch one version of it. Watch the latest version. But see, you can't get all that junk in your spirit and then go to bed. Because most of y'all never get into the word after the news. And watch this, the news is the last thing you hear. Now you go to bed with the, the, the junk in your spirit and you don't give God a chance to wash that garbage out of your head. We shall hear God. And so, see, watch this, I've learned the news. If I watch the 430 news, it ain't changed at 10 o'clock. Come on. So when I go to bed, I want, this, I want the word overflowing my spirit. He said, be of good courage. Watch this, be not afraid. Oh, but you just somebody said, don't be afraid. 
And then he said, Neither be thou dismayed because of four. The Lord thy God is with you. Woo! Wherever I go, God goes. If I'm in a store, I'm going to get old school song said, Take the law along with you. Oh, somebody in the house is old school. Come on, say, Take the law along with you. Everywhere you go. Had a verse said, You're going to need them. You're going to need them. Woo! Tell somebody, say, You're going to need them. You're going to need them. And so, y'all, I'm done. I'm through. I'm through. Praise God. I got to stop because I got to. I got to preach for real now. <laughs> but I feel something that boy tell you what, glory to God. I said I wasn't going to sweat today. I did. I said I was going to get all, just get all the work be done. But I want to see this though. You can't, hear me, listen, don't be in fear. Don't be in fear. You do what you do, and you take all precautions you can. Listen, if somebody cough, don't don't get and go. Ah, Jesus, they got it. You gonna cough too? Come on, somebody. Come on, just be smart. You cough, cover your mouth. That's all. You gonna sneeze? Put your head down in your clothes and sneeze inside of yourself. Come on, some. Come on. Amen, somebody. Amen. So folk don't don't get the Zachis from you. Cause even if I don't catch the corona, I don't want to catch no cold either. Y'all ain't talking back to me. Amen. And so let's keep our head in the game, keep our head right, and let's trust God. Come on, class, say trust God. Tell my person, I said, you gotta trust God. Listen, what's the, I'm 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 saying something. I I told the, I told the church this last night, uh, yesterday. I I, I told them this. Since 2000, what's it since, since 2004? In, in, in 04, we had SARS. In 08, we had uh, AVIAN, Evan. In 10, we had the swine flu. In 12, we had Mars. In 14, Ebola, Ebola came by and visited us. In 16, Zika came by, the, the, the Zika virus. In 18, Ebola came back. And now we have the, the Corombus. But here's what I told them. Bless God, if if, 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 if cancer didn't kill me, come on. If cancer didn't kill me, this can't kill me. With somebody here, God, come on. If what you went through yesterday didn't kill you, this can't kill you. If the hell you went through last year, if it didn't kill you, you thought the stuff you went through last year was the worst season of your life. And if God brought you through that, then sure enough, he'll bring you through. If there anybody who knows that if God can bring me through that, then God will. Somebody said he'll bring me through this. <laughs> Amen. Yes, he will. And so I believe God. I believe that God is able to do exceeding and abundantly of all we can ask or think according to the power that works in us. EJ, you're playing good today, but if you don't stop, I'm gonna holler. I'm telling you, I, I, I feel a holler on the inside. I, no, I don't wanna holler today. I wanna talk to y'all. But if he don't stop, all right, you can stop, I'm done. Listen, give you, give you one, one fast announcement. On next on next Sunday at three o'clock, uh, we're going to be at Pastor Smith Church to celebrate his 36 year pastoral anniversary. Amen. On next Sunday afternoon at three o'clock, I'm asking those of you who can, those of you who don't mind, come go with us and share over there on next Sunday uh, at the three o'clock hour over at Zion. We'll be over there. Over there, I ask you to please refer to your bulletins today, so that uh, so that we can expedite time. I want to pray for all of you on today, and uh, anoint you, and blessing uh, God cover your life. How many folks that God can cover our lives? Amen. If you have a, a uh, some vials, some vials of oil, you can go home and anoint your house, anoint your children, those you come in contact with. You can anoint them because. We believe that God can and he wants to do the impossible for us. Amen. Amen. I, I trust God for that.
Right, come on, y'all, look into the word. Right quick, Hebrews 3. Hebrews 3. Y'all, in, in our new church, when we have our coffee cafe, we're going to name our coffee, cab our coffee cafe Hebrews. Hebrews Cafe. I like that. Hebrews Cafe. Because Hebrews. Y'all missed that. Lord have mercy, Jesus. All right, Hebrews chapter 3, look at verse number 10. Are you there? It says, Wherefore I was grieved with that generation, and said, They do always err in their heart, and they have not known my ways. Verse 7, So I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Take heed, brethren, lest there be any of you an evil of an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. I'm going to give you the same of uh, reading over in the message translation. It says, even though they watched me at work for 40 years, your ancestors refused to let me do it my way. Over and over, they tried my patience, and I was provoked, oh, so provoked. I said they will never, I'm, I, I'm sorry, I said they'll never keep their minds on God. They refused to walk down my road. Exasperated, I vowed they'll never eat. I'm sorry, they never get where they're going. Never be able to sit down and rest. Verse 13. So watch your step, friends. Make sure there's no evil unbelief lying around that will trip you up and throw you off course, diverting you from the living God. This morning, I want to talk from the subject, watch your step. Look at everybody on the road at Mr. Karen, just have to say, neighbor, whatever you do, watch your step. Let's pray. Father, we thank you again for this time. Now, Spirit of the living God, speak to us today as only you can. Father, I pray you give me a teaching anointing today that I may be clear and be accurate, Father, on what you have for us to learn today. I so much bless you and give your name, praise, and glory. It's in Jesus' name I do pray. Somebody say amen. amen. You may have your seat. If you were to step on a bus or some type of big mode of transportation, one of the signs you will see, especially if you took Greyhound or or trailway, on the stairs you will see this sign that says to watch your step. If you were to walk on a path that was not necessarily level, uh, they would or should have signs that said, watch your step. Pastor, why? Because they understand that if we are not aware of what's going on around us, that it will be easy to make what is normal turn into a tripping hazard. And the truth be told, you all, we are in a season where many of God's children are tripping up. Not because we are not aware of the challenges that we face, but sometimes we can become so caught up in the status quo until we allow the devil to trip us up and we find ourselves stumbling and falling all over the place. There's some, how many of you in here, you ever fell in love? Look at that. Some of y'all just scared. You're like, nope, I'm my hand not going up past that. No, 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 no. Understanding falling is, is an unplanned occasion. 
none of us intend on falling. And so I've learned that if I can fall in love, then I can fall out of love. Pastor, why is that? Because oftentimes when we fall in love on an unplanned occasion, what we do is that we don't do what's necessary to maintain that love. But when I gradually grow into loving you, I begin to do things to secure our future because now I do what is necessary to make sure we stay together. Okay, let, let, let me go old school with y'all. Someone wrote a song that the same thing it took to keep your baby is going to take the same thing. I can brand new to keep her. And so is you all with our spiritual life. What it takes for us to grow spiritually means that we have to make sure we maintain those things because we are in a season where the devil wants to catch you with your guard down. And if he catches up with our guards down, we will find ourselves stumbling over and over and over over the very same things we asked and prayed for God to bring us out of. But how many of you all know that if once God delivers us, you can stay delivered? Tell the person that might say, I want to stay delivered. Now, it is in our subject, you all, alone that gives us this suggestion that we all need to be careful, not just about our physical lives, but watch this, especially be careful about our spiritual lives. Pastor, why? Because the Bible says that this earthly tabernacle is one day going to be dissolved. One writer said, while the, our man Paris, he said, our spirit man, is being renewed day by day. Which simply then says this, that we ought to be more concerned about the spirit man more than the outward man. Let me see if I can say it then like this. If you're going to spend time in the gym and eating right and doing all these things necessary to keep this body in shape, then how much more then should we spend that same time keeping our spiritual man in good shape? Come on, say, stay in shape, stay in shape. This is why, listen, if you want to, Paul says, I esteem the word of God more highly or necessary than my necessary food. Paul says, yes, I need food to live. But watch this, you need the word of God to really live. Because I don't want to live on this outside, yet my inside is dying every day. And there are some of God's children who are dying spiritually spiritually every day. It is not because you don't have the right food to eat. It's because I can bring you to the plate, but I can't make you eat. Come on, any of y'all who ever had kids, have you ever fed your, your child one thing of food and they got used to it, but then you want to change up their diet? And it's amazing how that little child, I don't care how small they are, they know that at that first taste, they know I don't want no more of that. Come on, and they, come on, I mean, a six month, a four month, or they don't have to lock their lips up. Maybe like, and you're like, come on, it's good for you. Well, they don't understand. You almost got to pull their jaw the loose to force feed them, but not, but see, y'all grown. I can't force feed you. Which means that you have to own purpose. Come on, class, say on purpose. You got to on purpose open wide and go, Lord, I don't like it, but let it go down anyway. Come on, say, Lord, let it go down anyway. You know how we do that. There's some, anybody, how many of y'all call Father John? Come on, I, I, come on. Y'all are called uh, 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 666, the cast door? Come on. How many of y'all, your parents used to give you that, that, that cast door? Now, how many of y'all almost puked and threw it up? Now, see, see. My, my my parents had a strategy. They knew that that that, that, that I wanted that, that that I was gonna throw it up. And so my father would do is say, he say, open wide, he put it in my mouth, hold our jaw, throw our head back, and make you swallow it. And you like you might to get about to get it through your nose, but even if you threw some of it up, there was enough that got down in there. Come on, to work it out. Here's my point. See, what the devil will do is get you in church. He'll make you, he'll, he'll cause a distraction in 
and you will miss some of the stuff. But God's word is so powerful. That even if I don't get it all, some going to get in there. Oh, someone says some going to get in anyway. And so this morning, I want to encourage you that in the course of our lives, you all, our spiritual walk, let's learn how to uh, watch our step. Now, understand, in other words, it is our, our natural life, you all, that is temporary. Come on, can I say temporary? But it is our spirit, man, that will never die. As a matter of fact, when we die, if you are dead over some time, the Bible says our body goes back to the dirt from which it's come. But when Jesus comes for us, your spirit, man, which has going to be with Jesus, will reconnect with our bodies, and the Bible says, and we shall be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, which means that even if your body has turned to dust, that it's going to all come back together and your, your, your earthly body will join your spirit and you will become an immortal being like Jesus was. And so this is our resolve. But watch this now. If we don't, don't spend that time with God, even though we are still Christians and we're still believers, the devil will let you live on this earth. And watch this now. You will find yourself missing out on the great things of God, not because you are not saved, but because you have not positioned yourself to learn what the word of God gives you access to. Now, today I want to teach you, you all, from our because I believe that it is this generation, you all, that, that, that mirrors the children of Israel. Pastor, what are you saying? Because Israel, Israel did not get into the promised land. Not because the land was not promised, but because they refused, watch this now, they refused to trust God, and they found themselves abandoning the things of God. And this is what I don't want us to happen, you all, in this church or in our generation. We cannot fail to do what God has instructed us to do. And now here is our challenge. Our challenge is to, to not allow uh, this world's system to override what God is telling us to do. And many times that's our greatest struggle because we have been pressured from outside influences that are pushing us to not obey God. And because sometimes, truth be told, doing the other thing feels good. Oh, I got two amen there and all right now. Somebody say, it feels good. Come on, and many times it's those other things that are pulling us, you all, that feels good. And what it's doing is causing us to move outside the will of God. But how many folks understand you cannot change the guidelines that God has set? As a matter of fact, in your house, if you live in a house with no guidelines, your house is waiting for disaster. Come on, I recall the days when we had things called curfew. Y'all miss this. Y'all can stay not as long as you want to. But when I was coming up, we had curfew. In other words, we could not be outside. Listen, when the lights came on, you better be in the house or be on the porch. Come on, maybe it's just in my house. Come on, man. If the lights start blinking, I don't care how much fun you were having. You find yourself doing a sprint. What where you going? The lights coming on. Because you knew if the lights caught you outside, man. You are going to be in trouble. But now, these kids have gotten accustomed. They stay out as long as they want. They go where they want. Here's the problem. When they get in trouble, they're calling the very ones who made the rule. See, y'all, Mother Sergeant, she looks sweet now, but she had an old saying. I never forget. And she still sticks by that saying. She said, she told her, I never forget. I was a young boy. She said, if you get in trouble, for defending yourself, I got you. Defending your, your siblings, I got you. But if you're getting told because you were stupid, she said, forget my phone number. And I said, wait a minute. If I can't call you, who I'm going to call? I said, Uncle Bill probably not going to come because he's going to call you. Uncle Charles stayed too far to come, so he ain't coming. My daddy, I can't find him, so that, that, that's, that's a picture. Who I'm going to call? Couldn't call Ghostbusters. They weren't out yet. Come on. So I'm trying to figure out who in the world I'm going to call. Couldn't call Jesus. He had a credit card. 
And so when the lights came on, listen, I made, made sure I was backing up. All right, y'all, getting dark outside. Come on, because I wasn't going to go against the guidelines. Now hear me, this, you all, is where Israel messed up. God gave Israel clear instructions. God gave them guidelines. God gave them boundaries. This is why you all, understanding boundaries are so important. How many of you all drive a car? Okay, no, no, no. For all my boundary haters, see, you still live in boundaries whether you want to or not. See, watch this. When you drive down a two-lane or, or, or one-lane highway, you have no clue what's on the mind of the person coming straight at you. And the only thing separating you and them is some little white lines. Now, you praying they stay on their side. But there is no guarantee they're going to stay on their side. But the line is there set as a boundary so that if I cross this line, it's something dangerous could happen in my life. Why then, if I can obey the lines on the street, I can't follow God's guidelines? Because guidelines, what this are not there to hurt you, guidelines are there to protect you. Somebody say, it's there to protect me. Now, now, I know some of y'all just turned me completely off. But turn me back on. Because, see, this sermon is not about helping you uh, change your behavior patterns. But what I want to do you all in this lesson is show you scripturally how to walk into the blessings of God on purpose. Come on, class, stay on purpose. Because many of us, you all, are trying to get the things of God but we don't know how to get them or access them on purpose. And it is, watch this now, what you don't know will not only hurt you, it will prevent you from obtaining them. Y'all missed that. Let me see then, if I can say it then, like this. See, the writer of Hebrews, he says, God has given us a view into the children of Israel life that, that Whatever they did, God said, that's what we should not do. And so what you don't want to do, you really don't want to catch yourself being at the promised land and not being able to obtain the promise. Because there is a difference between a promise and something that is promised. Y'all missed that. There is a difference between a promise and something that is promised. Let me see if I can give it to you. Like this. A promise is something that is on the way. If Lady Carol said, she said, at my house, I have a cake waiting on you. If Kiana comes along to my house, even though we love her, and, and she says, uh, God, mama girl, can I had a cake. She going to say, maybe I'd love to give it to you. <laughs> okay, and then I'm gonna use my, my lasagna. She didn't mess my whole thing up. If you made me some lasagna and you said, Daddy, I got some lasagna for you, I don't care who asked for the lasagna. What you should be saying <laughs> this lasagna is promised for my daddy. Even though I'm not there, it is still mine. Why? Because she promised it to me. God's promises are not somewhere waiting to get to you. God's promise is already there waiting on you to get to And so what God is doing for the believer in the Torah is that God then is waiting on us to come to the pickup station. Come on, how many of y'all have ever put some stuff on railway? Now watch this. Once you put it on railway and you have, you have, you, you have it? You have it? Yeah, how much you want? Huh? You have it? Oh, okay. <laughs> See, for those of us who ever used railway, what you did was you went to the same place every week, every month, whatever, and you put your little $10 down or whatever, but when you had your last payment, you took all 20 of your receipts, waited in line, walked to the window with receipts and your last payment. 
And you say, I am here to pick up my layaway. Now, they can't tell you it's not there because I got receipts that prove I've been making payments on that layaway and it, sh watch this, it should have been stored up waiting. Well, Jesus has already paid on your layaway. He's already put down a full payment on your layaway and on Calvary when he said it is finished. He told the Father, I have made the last payment and everything my children have for them is paid in full, but God don't give it to them until they come and pick it up. Somebody shout, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. And so, oh God, son, please calm down. Okay, I, I will. And so what God is doing is waiting on us to walk into the things, y'all, he desired for our lives. God is not going to rain down manna from heaven and let it fall down like he did for Israel. Understand, when God rained down stuff from Israel, Israel did not appreciate what God gave them freely. And to many of us, y'all, we don't appreciate what God has already done for us. You'd be surprised how many of God's children we make all kinds of excuses while we can't serve God with our time, our talent, and our treasure. But the moment we get in trouble, we make lying vow to God that God, if you get me out of this, God, I'll do this. And God says, I've already done enough for you. You made vow the last time and didn't keep it. And now you want something else? The worst thing a person could do is ask me for a loan and you still owe me money. Come on, beside your pastor, anybody got some money out right now? Come on, if anybody you owe will pay you back, you'll be doing something right now. Come on, besides me, come on. Oh, if all the Negroes, I'm sorry, the people who owe me money right now will just pay me back. Come on, I can go buy some stuff. Come on. I'm trying to tell you, I have a down payment on a brand new truck for Lady Sergeant. Come on, somebody. And so watch this. It's amazing, though. Know, we want to make vows to God as though we don't already owe God for the last time he made. Ah, uh, but that's not my sermon today. And so, and so understand, the blessings of the Lord, you all, are for every believer a promise. Now, what the devil wants you to do is to believe that God's promises can't come to pass in your life. Come on, look at Romans Roman, Roman 8 chapter. I heard you over there. Look at Romans 8, verse 8, uh, I'm sorry, Romans 8, verse 32. Romans 8 and, and verse 32. Look at what it says. It says, watch this now, it says, He, meaning God, that spareth not his own son, meaning Jesus, but delivered him up for us all. Watch this now. How shall he, meaning God, not with him, meaning Jesus, also freely give us, that's you and I, all things. Come on, can I say all things? You mean if God sent Jesus to us, the best gift? If God gave us his son freely? You mean this other stuff we're going after the God that I already have it in line for me? Come on, can I say it's mine right now? Watch this. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter number 2. Look at verse number 12. It says, we now have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God. Watch this now, that we might know the things that are freely given to us by God. Come on, class, say, God has given it to me freely. Pastor, how can God give it, it to us freely? I'm glad you asked. Because the reason God can give it to us freely is because Jesus has already paid and purchased it for you. Somebody says it's already paid for. You say, Pastor, I ain't convinced yet. Okay, go to Ephesians chapter 1, look at verse 3. Ephesians 1, look at verse number 3. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Watch this now. Who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus? Oh, somebody should have been shouting right there. He said, now, that word hath is an old English word, which simply means it was done already. Somebody said, done already. And so then, if God hath given us all, come on, can I say all? 
which means that there is nothing in your life that God wants to give you that he has not already made provision for you and I to obtain. You, you're saying, Pastor, he said all spiritual blessings. See, watch this. Everything that is in the natural first started in the spirit. Ah, uh, okay, okay, y'all missed it. Keep finger, your finger right there, Chuck. Give me uh, Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11, watch this. This year, uh, Hebrews 11, verse number, we started two. Come on, watch this, watch this, watch this. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Hebrews 11, 11, come on, come on, come on, Charlie. Uh, uh, ver verse three, come on, next verse, next verse, next verse, next verse. One, watch this, watch this. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed, watch this now, by the word of God. So that things which are seen were made of things which do appear. Y'all missed that. I took a whole word out and y'all missed the whole thing. Watch this. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Everything that was made that you see now, it first started in the spirit realm first. Now, go back to Ephesians, Chuck. And so watch this then. If God has given us then all spiritual blessings in heavenly places, God said, before I can get it to you here, you got to receive it from where it is. Before I can bring it into your life, you got to see it as already yours now. Somebody say it's mine now. Okay, Pastor, I'm convinced you. Okay, go to 2 Peter 1. Look at verse 3. Come on. 2 Peter 1, verse number 3. Come on, Chris. Are you there? Watch this. According as his divine power has given unto us all things. Come on, can I say all things? Has given unto us all things that pertain unto life. Watch this now. And godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. Now, don't miss this. God said... What I have for you is already yours. Everything you need, you want, desire, and will ever ask for is already yours, but you can't get it if you don't know it's yours. The word says, through the knowledge of him who's called us. In other words, until you know what you rightfully deserve to have, you will never access it. Let me see if I can say it then like this. I found out some years ago that my parents opened up for me a savings account. I can't even figure out how in the world I found it, Mr. Price, but I found it. And I saw a savings book that had my name on it in, 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 in Picayune, Mississippi. That was a bank called the National Bank. Now, they didn't put but, but, but $50 in the bank, but over 60 years. I'm sure if it accumulated something. Now, got two problems. First problem is, I ain't sure when I'm going to the bank. I may never go back to Mississippi ever in my life. Second problem is, if I go, I don't know where the bank is. Third problem is, if I go back and know where it is, I'm not sure what's in the account. But if I were to go back and bring that book, I don't care how long it's been. If I got a book in my hand that says, here's my account, here's my account number, and here's my ID, my name is Larry. It's my account, and somebody owe me some change. It's, what this, it's mine, even if they don't want to give it to me. If I go get it, they got to come up with something. Y'all missed that. The devil is making you believe that God is not going to do it. God said, baby, it's already yours. And if you can be bold enough to believe that it's already yours, you will kick down the door of poverty. You will kick down the door of sickness. You will open the door of and kick depression out your house if you know the rights you have from the Father. Come on, say, I have the rights. And so... If you understand, then the chapter of Hebrews, you what's it now? It was written to show the superiority of Jesus. Come on, can I say God is superior. Understand, he's writing to a church 
of Israel who was busy trying to uphold the Mosaic law. And understand, God has freed us, you all, from the curse of the law. And many of us are trying to keep what God has done away with. See, sometimes it's a bad thing to receive those things which were handed down from our ancestors. I'll give you a few. See, some of y'all who love them pig feet, pig ears, and pig tongue. I know it's not you, but the person by you still eat them things. Come on, hog hair cheese and cracker. Now, see, what well, many of us don't realize the slave master gave us the parts that they didn't eat. And they gave us the garbage, and what we learned was how to make a delicacy out of the garbage, which means it's a good thing in one sense that we know how to turn trash into treasure. But it was not given to us Watch this, because they loved us. They said to them, this is no good. And so what we did was took the guts and called them chitterlings. Come on. Y'all ain't hear me. Come now, now, now. If you eat chitterlings, I, I, it's on you. I ain't going to do it. You want, you want some? Get you some with some onions and some hot sauce. God bless your heart. I ain't going to do it. Come on. They gave us chicken feet, and y'all put it. And now chicken feet cost a dollar and fifty cents a pound. Because you learn how to turn what one man's trash was into a treasure. But God said, you don't ever have to settle for the trash. Because you are my child, you can eat good off the top. Oh, come on, how many top eaters do I have in the house? Somebody said, I'm a top feeder. Oh, baby, you don't get to the good cream because the good cream always rises to the top. Somebody said, I'm a top feeder. And so what we have to then see here then is that what God is doing, you all, is giving us a Old Testament principle that applies then to the New Testament believer. Understand back then, you all, God was angry because the children who should have known him did not know him. And it's a bad thing to say you in relationship with me, but still don't know me. See, there's there's some things that you won't invite me to if you knew me. Come on, if you ever invite me to your house, there's some things you know I like. Come on, because why? Because you know me. God wants us to get to know Him. Look at verse number ten in our in our text. Verse ten it says. Wherefore, I was grieved with that generation. God said, I was angry and upset with those folk. God said, I was grieved with you. And God said, I said, y'all error. Y'all made mistakes. Watch this in your heart. Which means that not only were they doing it outwardly and openly, but even those who were, who were doing this stuff undercover. Slipping and dipping. Hiding and gliding. Come on. They were sneaking and doing it because in their heart, that's how they felt. Now, watch this now. God said, because they have not known my ways. Now, the word error means to blunder or to stumble. It means to, 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 to deviate morally from the right way. It means to go astray in a figurative sense to do wrong and to sin. Now, the Bible teaches us, you all, that we can learn God in three stages. Come on, can I say learn God in three stages? The first stage is deliverance. Come on, say deliverance. The second stage is through development. Say development. And then the third stage is through destiny. Now, watch this now. God has given us, you all, three stages. Deliverance, development, and destiny. Now, deliverance is when God delivers us from the bondage of sin through our acceptance of Jesus Christ. Many of us have been delivered, y'all, from a whole lot of stuff. And the truth be told, and it should be told, there's some stuff I will never tell you that God brought me from. But it is because of him and what the blood has provided for us that when we made him the Lord of our lives, it has brought to us a deliverance. Now, over in Acts chapter 2, verse 21, it says, And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. 
Now, the saved means once saved from sin, but also it means I've been rescued and delivered from the penalty of sin. And is there anybody in the house who's glad that you've been delivered from the penalty of sin? Pastor, what do you mean? I've done some stuff, I said some stuff that would have carried a heavier weight. But since I made Jesus the Lord of my life, I can always refer back to his mercy. Is there anybody in the house who's glad for God's mercy? Someone said, God, thank you for your mercy. Man, every day of my life, I thank God for his mercy because I've done some stuff, thought some stuff, probably would have done some stuff, but didn't do it, but I thought to do it. But thank God for his mercy. Somebody said, Lord, have mercy, have mercy. But then we have the development. Now, it is in development, y'all, this is where we, where God invites us to enter into a deeper relationship with him. Now, how many of us want to invite God into a deeper relationship with him? Now, Pastor, why is that important? Because when you are in a real relationship with somebody, listen, when, when, when this girl fell in love with me, I made it my business to captivate her body, mind, and soul. Y'all missed that. Y'all ain't been in here. But I made it my business to make, her, to make her forget all the pain of her past. That when she got with me, she picked the right somebody. And I did everything it took to erase all the old bad memories and all the old junk. And said, girl, let's start new so I can create my own memories and make you fall deeper or become deeper in love with me. Because there is something that happens when you get... See, if you want to ever get rid of the pain of your old boo, find a new one. Y'all right. right. missed that. Right. If that old joker broke your heart, left you hanging, forgot all about you, and now you feel in some kind of way, if you want to forget them and want to get them off your mind, find somebody else who can do better than them than they did to you. Y'all missed it. Someone said, find somebody better. See, I learned there's always somebody better. Listen to everybody, everybody, I guarantee you, all the folk, all the sisters who walked out my life, they want some me now. Oh, don't worry, girl, I ain't going nowhere. But I'm just selling like it is. I know because sometimes I see them and she say, oh, you still married? Say, so, yeah, okay, when you ain't married, call me. Okay, whatever. I ain't calling you because now I see you, baby. No. Come on, I be air grabbing. No, child, no. I don't think so. Come on, because there's always somebody who God has put in place to erase all your old memories. This is why parents, keep, girl, ladies keep having kids back to back to back. Why? Because once that child is born, you forget about all the pain it took to get them here. Now, for some of you, you ain't got there yet. I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to leave that alone. And so it is you all in the heart. I, you said what? You only got one? Say, no, Pastor, I'm sorry. Don't worry. We're going to pray with that one. But see, it is you all in the hard places we develop a relationship with God. When life makes us uncomfortable, we develop a relationship with God. See, many of us, you recall over in Acts, the 16th chapter, Paul and Silas, you all were in the middle of a prison after being beat and chained and thrown into the back part of the prison. It was there they began to reach and pull on the grace that God has given them. It is not that they were not in pain, they were uncomfortable, they were hurting, and they could have, do, or have done like many of us do. We complain about everything. But the Bible said they chose to have a praise party in the middle of their pain. It's only, you can't praise God in the middle of pain if you don't know him. Okay, I give y'all something for free. See, you were called Judas. The word Judas is a word that's derived from, from Judah, which means then Judas then betrayed Jesus. Because see, a praiser can betray Jesus, but a worshiper can't. 
Y'all missed that. A praiser can praise and still betray. But someone who has a deeper relationship with God won't ever give up on God. Because when I'm in love with something, when I want something so bad that I want it more than I love my own life, I will never do anything to betray what I'm in love with. See, we can praise God when the folks around us praise God. Because if my neighbor is saying thank you, I'm going to say thank you. If my neighbor says glory I'm gonna say glory but all oh, in my secret place when I'm worshiping God oh God you are still good I'm in pain but you're still good all oh, my built I do but God you're still lovely you are still to altogether wonderful all oh, that's called worship because then my worship does not influence how else I'm sorry it will influence how I feel about God would simply mean that God is still good even when things don't feel good that God is still great when I I don't feel great that God is still merciful when all hell in my life is breaking out. I still love God. Somebody can say God is still good. And so that's where I develop in, in my test, in my trials, that I develop a deeper relationship with God. Look over here at Philippians chapter number three. Paul says that I might know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death now look here at the hc the hcsb translation he says my goal is to know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being conformed unto his death pastor what does all that mean i'm glad that you asked y'all ask questions today what but Paul is saying, and this Paul said that I might know him in this power. In other words, the same power that raised him from the dead is the same power that I got to have working on the inside of me. So when things in my life turn upside down, that even if this earthly body be dissolved, I have a building not made by man, and there ain't nothing the devil can do about it. But then he says destiny. Come on, class, say destiny. Now, destiny is the place God wants us to end up. Destiny is the place God has prepared. That's our promised land. Destiny is the place that God has already ordained or established for you and I to walk into on that day. See, Jesus says, I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, you may be also. In other words, God is not going to fix your mansion once you get there. What God has for you is already there waiting on you. All but in the here and now, every promise of God, the Bible says, in him is yes and amen. I'm going to add a word, and right now. Somebody say right now. And so... God then has our destiny already lined up for us. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 12. Watch this. Paul, Paul says, if we suffer, we shall also reign. If we deny him, he will also deny us. Now watch this now because this, you all, is where many of us live in this new generation. Because we'll, do, we'll own him at church. But deny him in front of our, 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 our peers at work. Come on. We'll own him in church, but deny him uh, at home. The Bible says, God says, if we suffer, we shall also reign. In other words, you said, Pastor, I don't want to suffer. Watch it now. Don't take suffering as being, you know, having your head cut off. This means folk going to talk about you and call you a holy roller. But I would rather be called a holy roller and get to heaven than be called an unholy roller and go to hell. All right, all right. All right. Come on. Listen, ain't no fun in hell. Bible says in hell, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Come on. One guy said, he said, Pastor, I can't go to heaven because all my friends going to hell. I'm like, you stupid. There is not going to be no party in hell. 
Come on. This is <laughs> first and the funny part is this. In hell, if you see your button, you, you ain't going. But somebody you know. <laughs> somebody you know, if they go to hell and they're going to see their buddy in hell, they're going to be fighting each other in hell. Right. Come on. Right. That is not going to be no fun in hell, y'all. That's why I can't go to hell. Watch this. In the hell, I was saying in hell, the worm don't die. Come on. Come on. Everything you feel up here, you're going to feel in hell. And then what's going to really make you mad is that you're going to see the devil and go, wait a minute. Is he the one? You mean this little squirming, strutting, no good joker, he the reason I'm down here? The problem is there is no way out of hell once you get there. Come on. And so the word of God says, if we suffer, if listen, I don't care folk can say about me whatever they want to say. Listen, I guarantee you, you ain't got no heaven to put me in or a hell. Bless God, if I keep my heart on Jesus, I don't care what you call me. Because at the end of the day, you will call me a child of God. Talking to a pastor last night, he said, Pastor, he said, Hey man, what am I gonna do? They said, Don't have church. I said, Look, man, for a preacher, I said, We damn if we do, damn if we don't. If we don't have church, they're gonna say, Oh, where's your faith? If we do have church, they're gonna say, Oh, he had church for the money. Stop being stupid. The reason I have church is because I love God. The reason I come is because I trust God. The reason I come is because I need my faith built up so in kind of testing, my faith will stand. Somebody say, my, my faith will stand. Ah, oh, okay, I got to stop. I got to stop. Write this down. Destiny comes to those who have, whose faith has been developed. Destiny comes to those whose faith has been developed. Destiny comes to those who have been developed. Pastor, give me some Bible on that. Chapter 24, verse 13. It says, but he that shall endure it. <laughs> he that endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. Would you tell a person by say, baby, whatever you do, hang on in there. Come on, look at him and say, whatever you do, stay with God. Amen, amen. You got to decide that I'm going to stay with God. Listen, y'all, I'm doing, give me something soft. I'm through. I'm through. Let me tell myself in any key. I ain't going to sing today. And so here you all is my challenge for the next few weeks. I'm going to park here, and y'all please let me, let me teach you and talk to you because I have to get your faith to growing. Because one, uh, one, one of the things I'm going to say next week is <laughs> I want to say, because I don't want to seem like I'm putting anybody's church down. But one of the things, uh, next week I'm going to show you why, wh why being in a hype church is not good. Because sometimes we run for the hype, and while the hype gets my, my emotions stirred up, it's doing nothing for my spirit. Come on. I'm gonna, I promise you, I'm gonna, if God give us days, I'm going to show you next week. Hype is good for the emotion, that, and, and that's fine. But you can't live off emotion. Come on, and too many of us, we go to places so I can get the hype. They hype. And that's cool if we shouting. But when a shouting is done, come on, when a shouting is done, I need the word. Bible says, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And we get excited in terms of over the hype. But hype can't keep you. Jesus says, and I'm paraphrasing, this is the Elias version, that when the hype is done, then come problems. When the hype is done, then comes tribulation. When the hype is done, then comes pain. 
when the hype is done, then come the word, the devil comes immediately to steal the word from you. And so while I'm cool with the hype, when the hype is done, give me some Bible. Y'all missed that. When the hype is done, give me some scripture. Because when it's all said and done, when I can't do the, when I can't jump, when I can't dance, when the hype is faded. See, it, it's like, see, it's the other day, my son got married to his lovely bride. Say hey, Brian. Say hey, sister. Now, now, at the, at the altar, they were so in love. They were making Google eyes. He can't be all hard like. I'm standing there. I want to break down and cry like a three-year-old. And, 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 and so they, they, they were all in love at the altar. But see, there's coming a day where she, gonna, where she can't stand him. Oh, how many of y'all been married over 10 years? Come on. Have you ever had a day where you loved them but couldn't stand them? Come on. And Dick, put your hand up. I know you couldn't stand me yesterday. I'm sorry, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just saying what I'm saying. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Just kidding. Put your hand down. Hey, baby, how you doing? Check me if I want that. All right, thank you. See, watch this. See, because when I can't stand you at the moment, don't mean I don't love you. Come on, I know already sometimes this girl, this girl has, has a problem with me. And I'm cool with that. But at the end of the day, I know she loves Big Daddy. Yes, she do. She loves, she loves some of me. Come on, that's why I can't die. She loves me. Come on. That's right. Woo. I want to shout by myself and look at you, girl. Anyway, I'm sorry. What was that? What was that? What was that? What was that? Here's my problems. Let's see. We can't get so hype conscious that we miss out on what the word of God says. He says, the word says that the, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The word of God, you are, watch this. The word of God is designed, watch this, for us to carry it so that it can illuminate our paths. Are you here? And as long as we keep the word of God, in front of us, we can't stumble. Come on, if we stay with, with the word, are you here? And so, if I decide that I'm gonna keep my heart with God, keep my mind with God, keep my emotions with God, keep my trust with God, Pastor, how have I done? That's when I stick with the word. See, watch this while the word says to watch your step. If I just keep my eyes on the word, the word will watch me. Come on. Because I now allow it. Watch this like, like a ship to be the governor or the, 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 uh, 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 the uh, thing called in, in, in a boat, the rudder of my life. That when danger comes, it'll move me out the way. Come on. When the devil comes to catch me off guard, it'll move me out the way. Are you hearing me? How many of you all want God to move you out the path of danger? Come on. Well, Pastor, what if I get into danger? That's where God gets to develop my trust in him. And here we are. That's where we are right now. Because we, some stuff we can't avoid. But if my hope is built on him, if my trust is established in him, one writer said, be rooted and grounded in him. If I remain in him, then watch this. It is my being rooted in him that will establish my outgoing and our coming in. And so we don't have to be in fear, y'all, of what the devil can do to you. Pastor, why? Because my hope and my trust is in the Lord. Are y'all best today? I'm done. Tell the person might say, watch your step, watch your step. Heads bow, I have the clothes.